I tested 22 of the most popular AI writers to see which one is the most SEO friendly so you don't have to. Let's get into it. Quick introduction. My name is Jackie Chow, founder of marketingletter.com, a free newsletter that helps you stay up to date with how marketers are using AI in their everyday lives. Make sure to subscribe for free down in the link below. And before we get started, I want to mention that this test took me 30 hours to complete. The least you can do is to like and share the video. Oh, and click some affiliate links down below. I know as affiliates and marketers, we tend to not click links, but not this time. Click my damn links so I can get paid. All right, now on to the tests. This will be part one of a two-part series of testing AI writers. First part will be simply generating content with different keyword intents and different keyword difficulties and seeing which one is the most SEO friendly. The second part will be the actual case study where I test and create one website per AI writer and one website per content agency all targeting the same keywords to see which one comes up on top. So by now, you're probably wondering which AI writers did I test? I was able to test ChatGPT4, Jasper AI, Copy AI, ScaleNut, Trolley AI, Content Sprout, Outranking.io, WriteSonic, Koala, Wordplay.ai, Autoblogging.ai, SEOWriting.ai, DraftHorse AI, ZimWriter, HumanWriter, Cuppa.sh, OnPage.ai, ByWord.ai, Copymatic.ai, Content at Scale, and Longshot. <sighs> That was tough. Probably wondering, why didn't I test Surfer AI? Quick note, Surfer AI, which, you know, came out recently and has extremely promising results, will not be tested as they're the sponsor of this video, just to make sure the integrity of the video is intact. And besides all that, I'm sure I miss some AI writers. Everyone and their dog has an AI writer nowadays. I'm sorry, but not really, because I'm running the test, not you users. Now onto the setup and how we're gonna be testing for AI and SEO friendliness. We'll be using two tools, which conveniently are the sponsors for this video, ahrefs.com and server. So we're using ahrefs to find high difficulty, medium difficulty, and low difficulty keywords. I personally use it for my everyday SEO needs, and ahrefs is a great tool for that. Your keyword explorer tool is probably the only keyword research tool I use, and its filters are a great way to find low competition keywords in bulk. With that said, we'll be targeting keyword difficulty of 90 plus, 50 plus, and 10 plus for best XYZ keywords, X versus Y keywords, and what is X keywords. So it's split between buyer intent, comparison, and informational keywords. For the high difficulty keywords, we have best VPN 2023, NordVPN versus ExpressVPN, and what is a VPN. For the medium difficulty, we have best office chair, gaming chair versus office chair, and how to re-upholster a chair. For the low competition, we have best Andy Rondack chairs, task chair versus office chair, and what is a task chair. Now, how will we decide how SEO friendly content is. We'll be using Surfer from SurferSEO.com as it'll give you a score out of 100, just out of ease. This tool doesn't just count keywords. It uses machine learning and natural language processing to analyze over 500 signals front page of Google. It's like having a personal SEO detective providing real-time competition-based and Google compliant guidelines. If that reads like an ad, because it is, they're a sponsor of this video. Yes, I know you can argue this may not be the best way, but in the second part of this series, which I mentioned earlier, we'll be testing the performance of the most SEO friendly AI tools to see which one ranks better and pit them against content agencies. So this will have to do for now. But honestly, say what you want, you armchair neckbeards. If you think you can do better, then I urge you to do it. Just like the previous link building case study, you probably won't because that requires getting off your butt and actually doing some work. So in case you don't want to hear me drown out about the next 22 AI writers, you can actually download the full report down in the description down below. And also there's chapters on this YouTube video. So feel free to skip to the end. Uh, and uh, skip me talking the whole time. So in last place, we have longshot.ai. Quick recap, this took forever to generate and it's multi-step. It took about five minutes to generate an SEO unfriendly article, $29 a month and about 58 cents per article. The SEO score of 26 out of 100, hard pass. If anyone is using their tool, please unfollow me. In 21st place, we have Jasper AI, a company who raised at a 1 billion plus valuation, and it comes up nearly last in our AI writer test. It's absolutely pathetic. Plans are about $50 a month for unlimited words, but we, we don't need that many to figure out it's a bad writer. An SEO score average of 30, with the buyer intent keywords being at about 30 as well. And so were the informational keywords. It's the hardest pass of all time for me. 
In 20th place, we have the child of Sam Altman, ChatGPT. Very cheap and it's a chat based tool. I'm sure with enough prompting, you can get this up, but nobody's got time for that. It's less than $20 a month, I believe. And I personally use it as a personal assistant. And the SEO score average was 34. Iron 10 keywords were at about 34 as well. And so were the info keywords. Very odd. I'm passing on this tool as an AI content writer. 19th place we have copy.ai it's another company that raised money and it raised i think nearly 14 million dollars to land in the bottom quartile of ai writers it's 36 dollars a month and also at unlimited words but the seo score average was 37 buyer intent keywords were 36 and the info keywords were also at a low 38 hard pass at 18th place, we have a tool which looked like it had a lot of promise, especially since they overpromised on the homepage. It's Write Sonic. It's $49 a month and it's about 16 cents an article. Pretty cheap, pretty easy to use, but not very SEO friendly. The SEO score average was 45. The buyer guides keywords were at 39. But funny enough, the info content was sat at about 48. So not bad, I guess. It's still a pass. 17th place, we have uh, trolley.ai. The founder reached out on Twitter saying their tool showed a lot of promise and hmm, false. This wasn't great. I wasn't a fan, but the tool is still new. So we never know where it's going. It's $29 per month and it's about 48 cents per article. The SEO score average was 48. Buyer guys being at 51. The info keywords were at 47. It's a pass for now. At 16th place, we have Outranking. The UX, however, I would put in last place. It took over 20 minutes to generate an article. It was very buggy. It came up with a lot of errors and it was like 30,000 words. Lobro really tried to write a book about VPNs. Didn't test the other keywords because nobody's got time for that. It's only in 16th place because of the sheer volume of words and it was essentially deemed SEO friendly. Oh yeah, it was $69 per month for 10 articles. So that comes up to like $7 per article. Friggin' hard pass. In 15th place, we have humanwriter.com, a very odd tool. I forgot who recommended it to me. It's like a bring your own API tool and it's free, I think. Kind of buggy, but yo, it's better than the seven other tools I mentioned before. The SEO score average was 52. The buyer intent keywords were scored at 50 and the info keywords at 53. Worth a try since it's free. So 14th place, we have a uh, draft horse AI. We have seen the founder Cody on Twitter. He talks a big game. So naturally I wanted to test his tool $49 and a dollar per article. It better be good, right? Wrong. The SEO score average was 53. The buyer guides were at 48. So not great. And the info keywords, which was, I guess it's saving grace. were at 55 at this price point, it's a pass for me. So at 13th place, we have Zimwriter. Everyone kept telling me to try it out, but it was really disappointing, actually. It's only about $10 per month, and I was spending about 50 cents per 2000 word article with GBT4. The SEO score average was sat at 53, buyer guides at 51, and the info keywords at 54. They only work on Windows machines, so I had to actually ask my friends to try it out on my behalf. And for that reason, I'm out. Pass. So coming in at 12th place, we have byword.ai, the tool that went viral from Jake Ward's tweets about his case study with Cosm. But my argument is that this site popped off because of its domain authority, not because of this tool at all. This tool isn't great at $100 per month and it comes up to $4 per article. The SEO score average was 56. The buyer guide keywords came in at 51 and the info keywords came out at 58. Way too expensive at $4 pass. So 11th place, we have Content Sprout. Not a fan of this tool right off the bat because it forced me to create some shitty topical map for three credits, which came up to be $21. Isn't that insane? Anyways, plans start at $97 per month and each article is pretty much $7.40. The SEO score average was 57. Buyer guides were at also 57 and the info keywords were at 56. $7 is highway robbery. Pass. We made it everyone, top 10. At 10th place, we have one of the only lifetime deals in the list, 
wordplay. Plans start at just $100, which gives you about three articles per month. Honestly, if you were to go with them, might as well go with the $1,000 plan, which annualized comes down to a dollar per article, assuming they go bankrupt after a year, which they probably won't. The SEO score was 57, averaged out, and the bio guides were at 50, so not great. But the info keywords were actually at 61. Since it's a lifetime deal and the info keywords came in pretty strong, it's a why not for me. Make sure to use my link down below to sign up if you want to try it out. So, you know, I can try to recoup some of the money I lost at no cost to you. At ninth place, we have Agility Writer, which I was actually pretty impressed with. Their plans start at $25 a month. Each article is only about 80 cents and they have several advanced writing options. I'm pretty into it. It's a shame their scores weren't great. SEO score of 57, buyer guides at 55, and the info keywords at 58. It's worth a try to see if they'll do well in your niche. We only tested two. So eighth place, we have content at scale. They saw a lot of hype recently and their pricing is pretty intense at $500 per month with like some $40 sign up fee or trial. I don't know how that works. Each article is like an astronomical $25. That costs more than my writers. Their scores weren't even that great, but the articles read well. SEO scores of 57 across the board and the buyer guides were at 48, which was very disappointing. The info keywords were sat at 63, which was solid. So they came up pretty SEO friendly, but honestly, for me, not friendly enough for the $25 per article. Pass. Coming in at seventh place, we have copymatic.ai. Pretty decent budget option. Their plans start at only $19 per month and it's unlimited words. If I were a PBN operator, I'd absolutely rinse them. The SEO score average was 59. Buyer guides were at 64, which was very solid. And the info keywords were at 56. So damn cheap. Give them a try, especially for their info content. I felt like they read really well. The link is down below. So sixth place, we have onpage.ai. I won't completely shit on them because their AI writer is quote unquote not detectable. Still not so sure about that. Plans start at a crazy $240 per month and each article is about $24. Insane. The SEO score was 59. Buyer guides were at 54. Info keywords at 61. At this price point, it's a pass. Top five, baby. Hope you're still with me. At fifth place, we have Kappa, which is another bring your own API option. So you pay for the API costs and they're very cheap, $140 a year subscription. Comes up to like what? I don't. I can't do public math, so $12 a month. Very cheap. Tool does very, very well on info content. The SEO score average was 62. Buyer guides were at 55. So the info keywords came in at a very high 65. Not great for buyer guides, but it's another great budget option for their info content. Give it a try. I was surprised with fourth place. I'm not going to lie. We have Scale Nut. I was not expecting them to land so high on the list because honestly, their site design reminds me of Copy AI. Their pricing starts at a very affordable $39 a month, and each article comes up to be about 80 cents each. The SEO score was 62. Buyer guides were at a high 67, and the info keywords were at 60. So their buyer guides were actually one of the highest scores on the list. It's worth giving a try. Links in the description, guys. Third place, we have SEO writing. Extremely cheap and they have ball publishing options so you can spam the SERPs. Their subs start at $12 a month, very cheap, and each article comes up to 24 cents a piece. Well-rounded, their SEO score being 62 across the board, buyer guides at 63 and info content keywords at 62. I've started using it as well, so give it a try, links down below. Second place, we have auto blogging. Yes, the owner is a friend of mine, but guess what? Even he has no idea he's on second place on this test. He's been begging me to leak him the details of this test, but valiant effort, nerd, no dice. When giving auto blogging a try, make sure you take off God mode. His regular writer sucks ass, so don't even bother. God mode takes up double the amount of credits, so his monthly subscriptions start at $49. Credit is about 80 cents there, but it goes down to as low as 49 cents. Give it a try. The site is ugly as hell. The owner is also cringe, but their SEO score average was 64. Buyer guides at 63, info content keywords at 65. Before you losers claim I'm doing him a favor or he paid for that this placement, no chance. This guy's way too cheap. Sign up below. 
first place. We made it everyone. I didn't want the most SEO friendly AI writer to be a name of an animal, yet here we are. Koala. They did the best buyer guides out of the all 22 writers we tested. I really liked their Amazon product roundup, especially since, you know, I work a lot in the Amazon affiliate space. I personally started testing out their articles on my parasites and they're flying to number one in the last two weeks and I've already started to make money. Anyways, here are the numbers. Subscriptions start at $9 a month, but the one I got was $99 a month. The one I tested comes up to be 80 cents per article. It goes down from there, so it's honestly not bad. And I was able to secure a discount for everyone. I reached out to the owner. He has no idea that they're gonna be first on the test and managed to negotiate 50% coupon off the first month with the coupon code Indexy. Give it a try and let me know what you think. All right, that's it. So to recap, number one overall AI writer, also with my opinion, is Koala. I like them because they do buyer guides really, really damn well. I'm an affiliate, so we out here now. Oh, and also I managed to negotiate a 50% discount off the first month, the coupon code Indexy. It only works if you go through my link in the description. Also, I get paid. But hey, I only reached out after I finished the case study or test. And the best AI writers for informational keywords is uh, it's auto blogging. And uh, it's owned by my friend Vibov, which is number two. He doesn't even know it's number two. Didn't want to tell him. But runner up actually for informational keywords is Kappa. It's the link number five down below. I just want to give them a shout out, but uh, their current interface kind of sucks. The best budget option is probably SEO writing. It's currently number three, or it could be Copymatic, which is uh, number seven in the list. Make sure you click my links once again. Don't go directly to the site. I, I need to get paid, guys. This uh, this video took way too long, but uh, I'm not a fan of SEO writing's buyer guide. SEO writing too much, too hands-on. Uh, I don't want to do too much, you know, I'm kind of lazy and uh, copymatic. Make sure uh, you be careful there. It spews a lot of nonsense sometimes. So that's the video. What do you think of it? I really did try my best here. I tried to balance monetizing and staying impartial with things. Yeah, I'm getting pulled from all sides. So try my best. I would appreciate it if you gave it a like and maybe comment down below. For example, for the case study, which content agency should I test? They all claim to be the best. So let me know down below and I'll be sure to reach out make sure to check the videos that are at the end scene of this video right now